Pineapple and olive? Sweet and salty. The f are you? The f you doing in my crib? Is that burnt crust? Uh, God, I hope not. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at Wade Wilson's pizza order from Deadpool, which is topped with pineapples and olives. Classic Deadpool. Gross toppings aside, it's a great opportunity to learn about cold fermenting pizza dough. Why cold fermenting? Because it helps produce lots of nice burnt, blackened, burnished bubbles, as per Wade's request to burn the crust. You'll see that I'm measuring out 250 grams each of bread flour and tipo doppio zero Italian flour, along with two teaspoons of active dry yeast. These flowers have very high protein contents and are going to help us build more gluten structure. We're going to whisk those together and measure out 8 grams of kosher salt, which we're going to, again, whisk together before adding exactly 325 milliliters of tepid tap water, aka 325 grams, creating a 65% hydration dough. Trust me, I did the math. Using a wooden spoon, we're going to mix it together until a shaggy ball forms, at which point we're going to bravely turn out this mass onto an unfloured countertop. Remember, we're trying to keep this ratio of flour to water as precise as possible. Bring it together as best you can with your hands and get to kneading. You should see it start to come together into a semi-smooth mass. Try to resist adding flour or water if you can. If it's too sticky, try the slap and fold method. If it's too dry, just keep working it. Once it comes together, we're going to knead it until no dry clumps of flour remain, maybe five minutes, which should leave us with a tacky, supple, but not sticky pizza dough, which we are now going to ferment at room temperature for eight to 24 hours in a lightly oiled food bucket. If you don't have one of these, just use a nice big bowl because this guy is going to at least double in size. Drop the dough in there, cover it with its lid or plastic wrap, and let it sit for 8 to 24 hours. Feeling just a hint of sadness from the fact that if it's Sunday, you're going to be enjoying pizza on Thursday. I personally went for 12 hours and was greeted with a sticky glutinous mass that smelled like a beer brewery, which is actually what we want. We're going to prep a few proofing bowls by liberally greasing them down with olive or vegetable oil, and then we're going to scrape our dough mass out onto a generously oiled- oh sh**, 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 onto what was uh, supposed to be a, um, oh god, a well-oiled countertop. Uh, let's, uh, hold on, let me get, uh, oh god. You want to generously oil down both your countertop and your hands, because guess what it's going to stick to? That's right, both. We're going to knead this guy just a little bit just to punch the air out, and then divide into four pieces for its long cold proof in the fridge. Make sure you oil whatever you're cutting the dough with, too, obviously, and then form these guys into balls. We want to sort of tuck the top down underneath itself, creating a solid skin on the top, and then pinching it between our fingers like so, create a sort of little bubble of dough that we're going to top with a little bit of oil, plastic wrap, and then refrigerate for an excruciating three whole days. The dough is going to rise a little bit, but not too much, and we're going to turn it out onto, this time, a generously floured work surface. We're not working any of the flour into the dough, but we want as much on the outside as possible. We're going to pat it out into a flat disc, like so, making sure that it's well coated in flour, and then I'm going to take a page out of my man. Mark Iacono's book and roll this guy out using a bottle. He uses a wine bottle. I'm using a whiskey bottle. It seems appropriate. Maybe take off the labels unless you're super lazy like me. And then we're going to use our knuckles, turning the dough hand over hand until we've stretched it out by about maybe another 50% with a little extra dough on the edges to form our crust. Now I'm going to coat our pizza peel with semolina flour or cornmeal. And this is going to act like tiny little ball bearings that'll help our pizza roll around freely when we want to get it on and off the pizza peel. And now that it's on the peel, it's time to top it up. I'm going to start with the requisite tomato sauce and then a nice healthy layer of mozzarella cheese. Make sure that you're using freshly shredded mozzarella, not pre-shredded because that stuff is coated in potato starch and will result in nasty, kind of not even melted mozzarella cheese. And then here come the olives and the pineapple, two of the world's most reviled pizza toppings. But far be it for me to judge a man's pizza preferences when he's waving a gun in my face. I'm going to top this with a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese to sort of keep the toppings in place. And then I've had an oven preheating at 550 degrees Fahrenheit for one full hour containing the pizza steel onto which I've deposited the pie. And eight minutes later, we are greeted with this, a flavorful, chewy, crispy pizza dough topped with some regrettable fruit and vegetables. And you can't see it in this footage, but this rudimentary iPhone photo will show you that the bottom of this is beautifully peppered with the slightly burnt bits that we all know and love from our favorite pizza joint. My first bite was useless for a taste test because this pizza is still clocked in at about 7,000 degrees Kelvin. So I'm going to take a second for this to cool off and sort of admire the whole structure and then I ate myself an entire slice because, like Wade said, sweet and salty. It's not that bad. Or, like Deadpool, am I just f***ing with you?